Hi guys, this is going to be a short rant on my reaction to a reaction video on Dr. Zakir Naik's Scientific Miracles number three, which is about a topic which is embryology, a topic I thought was well over and done with. And it's a you know, part three of a series by some Muslim apologists where these guys try and project scientific findings into the Quran. And I just watched this piece of trash and I'm, I'm appalled, I'm disgusted, I'm really angry about this. Why do people do this? I cannot understand why people display this level of dishonesty, presenting us with what, 42 minutes of lies and deception. Why? I really don't get it and I despise this kind of immoral action, lacking ethics and, you know, without any integrity. Why do this? This is over and done. Uh, and by the way, the Quran also hates this, saying don't confound truth with falsehood and don't argue what you don't know about and if you deceive then you will keep this deception. And that is what they're doing. And it says avoid false statement. So why is what they are doing here for 42 minutes only lies and deceive? I don't understand this. Now, I, I don't really need to do anything here because everything was done. It was a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember when Zorsis came up with his pamphlet on, on embryology in the Quran. And then people went and examined, analyzed and researched this. And then Martin and Captain Disguise, they went and presented their findings on something like, if I remember correctly, it was like 150 pages. And this is only four or five years ago. So what they came up with is, I mean, they took every single claim, every single one of them. And because Captain Disguise is Arabic speaking, he could go to Lisan al-Arab, he could go to Lane's lexicon, he could easily verify what all these words mean. And he showed that alaka does not mean what it is said. al nutfa is not what it says, what these people claim that it means. It's, it's crazy. So then Tzotzis modified it and it was version 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.2b and then version 2, version 2 and 2.2 2 and, and so on and so forth. And then in the end, Tzotzis at least did have the intellectual honesty of retracting his pamphlet when confronted with the evidence. And he then came out with um, a statement that there is nothing of scientific interest in the Quran and that people should stop looking at this in this way. And I wish others would follow his advice. Now, you know that there's no love loss between sources and me. But here, I must say, at least here, he had the honesty in saying, okay, that's it. I give up. Yes, the evidence is overwhelming. There is nothing of scientific interest in the Quran. Because, come on, it's very easy. Look at embryology. If you look at reality, you need in the at minimum four elements to get everything going. I'm not so even talking about the Carnegie stages and all that shit. I'm talking only about the beginning where you need the cells. You need the male and the female cell. You need the process, the fertilization, you know, with the with the two the the fusion of the two cells. You need the zygote. And then forget about the blastocyst and everything that happens later. But you need at least the two cells, fertilization and zygote. Otherwise, there is nothing that resembles embryology. Does the Quran mention any of these four elements? No. So what are we talking about? So if you go into Alaka and you, you just claim that it's like a leech, this is the most stupid thing that you can say, really, because a leech is the least like an embryo, because it's a worm, it feeds on blood. An embryo uses blood to distribute nutrients and all sorts of things throughout the body. It is not food. The leech increases body size. The leech is like 13 centimeters long. It has suckers. It has 60 to 100 teeth. It clings to its prey. It attaches to the outer skin. It lives in fresh water. It has five pairs of well, eyes, in other words, light receptors. And it has chemoreceptors near the head. It lays eggs and it is not created in pairs, male or female. It is a hermaphrodite. So what part of a leech resembles an embryo? You are embarrassing yourself if you make this claim.
There is nothing here. If I look at the if, Quran, oh, by the way, the, the gender is determined right here during fertilization, whether this is double X or XY. It's the opposite of what the Quran and what Islam teaches. Okay, it's the woman that is the, the ground and the basis, and then the male is produced from the female form, which is why if a woman has a Y chromosome and the, the right hormones don't, I've, been, I've done all this in previous videos, and this doesn't work, she will remain a woman even though she's a man. And this only becomes apparent when she doesn't have a period and when people start checking this and they find, oops, she has got a Y chromosome and is actually a, ma a male, a guy. But because it didn't work, nature makes mistakes. There is no fine tuning. Nature is not correct. And this is one of the mistakes that happens. So it's not on day 40 or day 42, whatever, what um, hijab calls more specific, when an angel determines what the gender is. No, it happens at fertilization. What an idiot. Anyway, even in the Quran, God does not know how to produce humans. It's either from earth, from a worthless fruit, from clay, from, I'll, I'll put all this up here, from nothing, and then from water. So even the Quran does not know how humans are being created. But it's still all about creationism. It's not about nature. It's not about biology. And it's not that much science here because in embryology, we know what happens. We know what happens when and where. And the, the only thing is the internals we're not 100% sure of. But the, the rest we know. So this is not going to change. A thousand years of pregnancy lasted a thousand, nine months and it's still nine months. So this doesn't change. And it's not about tafsirs, but reality or truth. And the tafsirs, which, by the way, only confirm this. If you look at tafsir, if you look at Ibn Kathir, he just says how he initially created man from an extract of tin. This was Adam, peace be upon him, whom Allah created from clay, from mud. This is how Adam was created and then everybody else is made from different things. And then it's in a safe place, meaning the womb. No, the womb is not a safe place. And then what, what he considers to be so compelling is that you have three layers of darkness. What are the three layers of darkness? Nobody agrees. Depending on where you look, everybody has something else. And they're not darkness anyway, because if you shine a torch in there, you can see how the embryo reacts. So everything they are saying is 100% wrong. So why go there? Why do it? And why? I mean, think about this. They're arguing about the meaning, about the contents of the word alaka. Now, if alaka can mean a blood clot or a daffodil or a submarine, what is the value of having a Quran? If you can make it, say whatever you want. How does that make sense if you, at the end of the day, are writing your own Quran? It's, I don't know why they did this. For me, this is just embarrassing, making Muslims look like incompetent, uneducated, but most importantly, like dishonest fools. I don't understand it. Anyway, all all these these files are available. I mean, this what um, what Martin and, and Captain Disguise have done is readily available in the form of a PDF, in the form of uh, blogs, in the form of videos on YouTube. Anybody can go and look this. Even a superficial level of research will reveal these files and you can see in great detail, in total depth, each one of these claims being refuted and completely annihilated. So please stop this. It's making you look like stupid fools. Oh, for crying out loud, this is so terrible. I get so angry and so frustrated at this level of dishonesty. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. And I hope oh, maybe they will stop doing this stupid nonsense. But I doubt that they will have the honesty to do that. Okay, then I'll see you the next time. Bye.